Sometimes when you're trying to express the location of a point in the plane, rectangular coordinates are not always the most effective way to express where, where that point is. Uh, and we know this just from intuition, you know, it's, it's not actually too much how our brains even work. You know, if you're thinking about where something is in the distance, we don't normally think in terms of horizontal distance and vertical distance away from us. Normally we think more in lines of line of sight, direct distance, and the, you know, kind of the angle of elevation that the object makes with the horizontal. You know, think about looking at something up in a tree or off in the distance or, or you know something like that we think in terms more in terms of angles of elevation and it turns out we have a, a coordinate system that is conducive to this you know this line of thinking and th these are called polar coordinates so the old way of, of thinking about it or the rectangular coordinate way of thinking about it uh, a point out here in the distance we'll call it X comma Y as we've often done uh, if you had to explain this to a brand new beginner, somebody who's never seen this before, your explanation would probably go something like this. You'd probably tell them, well, this first number here is the distance that, um, uh, that this point travels along the x-axis. So this would be like your x value. And the second coordinate here is the y value of the point. So you would go up a total of y units. And then you could either go out x units and then up y units, or you could go up y units and then out x units. But either way, you would wind up at that location, you know, at the end of the day. Everything's based off of horizontal distance and vertical distance. But getting away from this, this line of thinking, let, let's think about it another way. All right, so this is how you would think about this in what's known as polar coordinates. So polar coordinates would um, more just take a direct line of sight approach and identify the directed distance from the origin over to your point. We'll call this distance R. And it also measures the angle of elevation from the positive x-axis. And this angle could be small, it could be big, it could be more than 90, it could be less than zero, it could be beyond 2 pi. The radian angle is irrelevant. You'll end up somewhere, um, and then you'll go R units away from the origin, and you'll be at, at a particular point. Okay, so uh, this is expressed as r comma theta. Um, just to be clear, there's no connection between x specifically to r and y specifically to theta, even though the, the notations look a little similar. These are all interrelated, as we'll talk about in a minute, but, um, but the, just because the x is listed first and so is the r, there's no you know, real, real immediate connection there, though. All right, so uh, let's just practice very quickly. We're going to keep this very light. These are going to be sketches, not super in-depth, detailed answers. Um, this is just some, some rough practice here. So I'm just going to label these A, B, C, and D, and I'll, I'll color code them. Okay, so A, we're, um, we're going to plot the point 2 pi over 4. 2 is the R, pi over 4 is the theta. Uh, and the way I would recommend that you think about these points is um, I usually think of like a, a, a some man standing at the origin um, who's got like a, a pellet gun or something, and he's going to face his body, the, the, the chest of his body, he's going to face his body in the direction of theta, right? So, you know, zero to 360 degrees is going to turn that direction, and then he's going to shoot R units in front of himself. So like for the first point for A, he's going to face pi over 4, so 45 degrees right here. And then the R value is 2, so he's going to go 2 units directly out from the origin. And let's say that would put him somewhere like right about here. So we'll label this as point A. And just to be clear, that distance here is directly 2 units. And he was facing the angle pi over 4. Okay, um, now normally we don't put the angle and the line segment in there. So this is our A, but um, but I just put those other things in there just for you know, explanation purposes. Okay, how about the B? How about the B? The, the angle this man will face his body will be negative pi over 2, which is downwards. That's this direction, the negative y-axis. And we're going to go four units out in this direction. Now, just because the R is positive 4 doesn't mean we'll be up here. We'll actually be down here because... 
facing this direction, we're going to walk one, two, three, four units out, you know, um, in, in that particular direction. Okay, so let me get rid of these. So four units out, that's a good bit farther than A. So this will be B. All right, the C. All right, this one's got an interesting twist to it. Let's face our body in the direction of 3 pi over 4. That's this direction right here in the second quadrant. But this time the R value is negative. Now that's strange. How do we think about this? Well, imagine the man and his body is facing this direction. If that R had been positive 3, he would have gone out 1, 2, 3 units and put a dot. But since the R was negative, he's actually shooting behind himself, right? Um, behind his head, directly backwards. So that point would actually be in the fourth quadrant, strangely enough. Okay, and again, I'm just giving a rough sketch of this. Um, we'll call that point C. And again, the reason it's in the fourth quadrant is the R value was negative. And lastly, the point D, we're going to go theta is 7 pi. Now that, that seems kind of strange. Normally we think of angle zero to two pi, but, um, but in this case, seven pi, we can do that. We have pi, two pi, three pi, four, five, six, seven pi. So that's this terminal angle here. And we're gonna go five units directly out that angle. So we'll come way over here. This will be point D. And so we have these, these you know, four different points drawn here. So this is a, a technique worth practicing to, to get fairly comfortable with. All right, now another hugely important question is converting between the X's and the Y's. So what I've done here is I've plotted a point and I've uh, labeled it in terms of its X, Y value and its R theta value. And what you see what naturally arises is a right triangle. And I actually see lots of relationships here that we can exploit to write down a bunch of conversions between X and Y and R and theta. Uh, for instance, uh, here's a couple that jump out to me. I see a right triangle and I see the three edges and I automatically see that X squared plus Y squared equals R squared. And so that's a great conversion. If you're given an X, Y point, you can find the R using the Pythagorean theorem. So that's, that's pretty cool. Um, the second thing I see incorporating the theta is, uh, you remember your basic trig relationships from many, many uh, semesters ago, where you have like adjacent over hypotenuse and opposite over hypotenuse and opposite over adjacent, all those good things. Let's use those again. And I'll, I'll jot these down as, as we do them. All right, so for example, I know that um, cosine of theta is adjacent over hypotenuse. Now this is no good because this has X's paired with R's. So let me multiply R to the left hand side and that would give us X equals R cosine theta. That's a great conversion because that way if you have an R and a theta, you can get the X coordinate. In a similar way, sine of theta would be Y over R so the y would equal r sine theta. That's a great conversion. And then the last one, if you want to know the theta, then you can take a relationship such as tangent of theta equals y over x. And so then the theta would be the arctan of y over x. Uh, most textbooks, when they write this relationship, they will just leave it tan of theta equals y over x and then at any point if you need the theta then you can take the arctan of both sides but these are, are what's well known as the common conversions between polar coordinates and rectangular coordinates so if you have an x y point you can find the r and the theta and if you have the r and the theta you can find the x y point so these conversions work in both ways sometimes you'll have to convert points to in one form to points in another form sometimes you'll have to convert equations in one form to equations in another form uh, now i'm not going to work through any of those examples in this video but you can expect to see some of those examples coming up shortly